Hey folks, it's eChip with Contentment. You see this? It's a sample eye joist test piece that we built. We built them straight, we built them strong, and they passed the load test. But will the county building inspector let us install them in our new off-grid home? Nope. The result was way more lumber, way more adhesive, and a whole lot more work. Let me show you what happened. Wormski! Yeah? What are you up to? Screwing some holes. Okay. Power drilling some holes. For what? A jig. Or as Scott likes to call it, a fixture. A fixture. I did call it a jig, but then I realized that jig is not the appropriate word. How dare you? Jig is something you dance a little of. You dance a little jig? Yeah. I guess. I wish I could dance a little jig. No, this is our fixture for the eye joist. We're gonna attempt to build our own eye joist. Say that again. Attempt. 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 Aren't you There's no guarantee, but it uh, the prospects look really good. So, I'll show you how this works. A little clamping pressure on it here. A little jed clamping. Let's see if we can a little clamping. Oh yeah. That's not going anywhere. I can't even pull it out of there. Well, I can move it a little bit. So they would just dig into the wood. That sounds like a lot of extra work. Would it be worth it? I don't know. For, for for the amount of work we got to do, I don't know. <laughs> amount of uh, iJoyce, the number of iJoyce we got to build, I don't know. I don't know if it'd be worth it, but. They don't come out right. Well, that's the idea. It's supposed to spring. It's supposed to spring in some of it. When you're clamp, when you're gluing stuff and clamping it, you have to be careful about your pressure. You can over clamp it. That helps. Yeah. So, I don't know. It looks good at least. We'll see if it works. <laughs> it looks so industrial. Mmm, doesn't it? So industrial, Wormski. Stop. Okay, so this is the wood we have left to mill. Pile, pile, pile. Part of a pile. That's what we've milled. I should say that's what Wormski has milled. <laughs> that's our shavings. Those are our cuttings. Okay. So this is the fixture that I set up to build my composite beams, eye joists. Um, you'll notice here that I've snapped a string and made sure that this bottom, I call it a table, but this bottom support is pretty straight. When I say pretty straight, it's probably not off more than about a 16th of an inch. Um, but it's nice and flat and it needs to be that way because otherwise <clears throat> when you put your flanges down here and you drop your webbing into it, if it's not straight, those edges of the webbing where they come together will not meet uh, properly. They'll either be more open at the bottom or more, more open at the top and you won't get a, a good square uh, abutting of those web pieces that you need. It's critical to the eye joist strength. I, uh, I just built this out of some, you know, leftover wood I had. I did buy a little bit, but I had a lot of leftover wood from um, uh, forming up the foundation of the house that we're building. And so uh, I just used it. To, uh, to build this jig. And then as you'll see, I have toggle clamps, vertical toggle clamps on top here. Um, ASTM, the American Society of Testing Materials, says that if you're gonna glue up something like this using their standard approved 
uh, adhesives that these toggle clamps or these clamps cannot be uh, greater than 15 inches apart. They have to be between 12 and 15 inches and a toggle clamp has to be within two inches of the end of, you know, whatever you're clamping, your, your work, your eye joist. So as you can see, I'm not meeting the standard here. I was just sort of playing around with what I had. The, uh, the place where I bought the toggle clamps ran out. Gee, go figure. <laughs> I wonder why they ran out. But um, I've ordered some more. And so I've got four more toggle clamps coming that will allow me to get that proper spacing so I can get proper glue up on these. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, this little table here will actually hold the bottom flange. And there are these little keepers here uh, to keep the flange from sliding off when you're working with it. These right here help keep the eye joist vertical while you're working on it because it's the same thickness as this spacer here. And so it keeps it nice and vertical. And then these are, are poised uh, to come down straight on top of the middle of the top flange when you glue it together. So um, you need 100 pounds per square inch of pressure uh, for this glue up and you can get there with these very easily. So, um, yeah, so this is the setup that I've got. And, uh, you know, uh, if you're building eye joists, you'll, you know, you'll make yours your own way. I'm fortunate in that, you know, even though I'm building a house out here, I have a cabin that I could actually mount this to the front of and it's exactly 24 feet which allows me to build a 24 foot long eye joist. And I'll show you some of the first ones I made. Okay, so this is the first real attempt at our eye joist at actual size. Um, this is really just to, you know, test the fit and test the, the overall height to make sure we have it right. And we don't have it right. <laughs> um, and some of the problem is with the depth of this slot. And some of the problems with the thickness of this flange, because it, it's tending, it may look the same on the camera, but it's tending to vary just a little bit. And so on this end, it's too short. In the middle, the eye joist is just the right size. And then on that end, it's too short. So we got to figure out what we're doing wrong here and uh, fix it. But uh, we'll get it first try. So the building inspector saw what we were doing and he said, you've got to have those stamped by an engineer. I said, okay. Uh, so we hired an engineer. And uh, we had several test pieces ready for him to come out. We load tested them right in front of the engineer. He looked at him and said, well, this looks really good. I think this will work. I just need to go check some things with the code. And then a little while later, the engineer came back to us and said, you can't build those. And we said, why? Let me show you why. You see that? That's called a finger joint. I made it with a couple of routers and I cut it into this flange material and glued it together with the code approved glue. That dark spacing you see in there is the adhesive. There are no gaps in this finger joint at all. It's near perfect. But that's the reason we can't build our own eye joists. So the International Code Council says that I'm not even allowed to call them iJoists or TJI joists because those are proprietary names that only the manufacturers can really use. Even though, you know, the term is in common use like Kleenex, um, I'm not allowed to make my own iJoists. They told me that in order to get my iJoists approved for installation, and to get an engineer stamp on it. I have to test over a hundred of those finger joints at a cost of about a hundred thousand dollars so that they will approve them. Now instead, what the code council recommended is building something they call composite beams. In the International Building Code, there is a supplement called composite beams. And basically it's a way to build your own roof beams, floor joists, those kinds of things, um, without being able to build 
an eye joist. They're a lot heavier, but we were able to get an engineer's design stamp for them and uh, build them. But they'll pass inspection and uh, we'll get them up on the, on the house roof soon in an upcoming video, you'll see. So we switched gears, got an engineer's drawing and stamp, and we built these composite beams. It's double the lumber, four times the glue, and they're a lot, lot heavier. But it, they'll pass inspection. We'll get these up on the roof soon. I gotta give a shout out to CP Adhesives of Newark, Ohio. They are the uh, supplier that provided this Aerodux 185 resource and all adhesive for our beams project. The adhesive is strong, it's waterproof, exactly what the code calls for. And when they heard how much we needed for our project, they gave us a, a good deal. They really helped us during this process. So thank you, CP Adhesives. If you're thinking of making your own structural plans in building a home or, or any structure that is subject to building codes, then talk to your inspector early. Find out what certified means and find out if what you want to do is something that you can do. A budget for an engineer's stamp if you plan on doing anything out of the norm and always have a backup plan. Now these composite beams will soon be on our house and they'll be inspected and they'll pass. But uh, this was not fun. It, it, re it resulted in quite a long delay in our house building project. So that's my advice to you is to, uh, you know, if you wanted, if you're a DIYer who wants to build all your own stuff, then uh, make sure that the authorities agree with you. Hey, if you've run into any crazy roadblocks in your construction story, uh, drop them in the comments. We'd love to hear from you and what you've done about it. Hit subscribe so you don't miss upcoming videos and share this video with anyone who's thinking about building their own home. Around here, we're proving it's possible one challenge at a time. Hey, don't forget to like, subscribe, and uh, come see us again on this channel.